Hey, fellas. Welcome back to another episode here at the Man Corps. Sorry it's been a couple days since I've posted a video. I've been really busy, but um, I'm excited to be with you today. And uh, we're going to cover something really cool this week. And I wanted to uh, thank everybody for continuing to tune in, join, um, and sharing your comments and journey in the uh, show notes below. That stuff is, is awesome, and I, I really do appreciate hearing from each one of you. If you're new here, the Man Core is a community for men digging to their core to figure out who they really are, why they're really here, and who it is that they really want to become. I would love it if you would subscribe for future videos. But for this week, what we're going to do is we're going to do a series, and I'm going to cover three areas that, in my opinion, are the most important for men to really focus on. So those are going to be purpose or mission, ego, and confidence. Those three areas we're going to cover, and I'll just do them in three different videos. So the first one that we're going to do, I'm going to kind of lead up to confidence because we hear that word a lot. It's something that we're all after, but there's a lot of gray area about what it really means. So that's going to be the last video, but these three areas are really definitely and so connected. So today we're going to cover off on ego and then we're going to move in to purpose and then we're going to move into confidence. So definitely, uh, you know, subscribe and continue to, to tune into future videos uh, as we get closer to the, uh, the, the number one topic that everyone's after, which is confidence. So for the first one, you know, ego has a lot of components to it. It's a very complex topic. And, you know, some consider the Freudian or the very complex, very psychological side of ego. That's really not how we're going to look at it. What, uh, what I want to do today is to, you know, talk about things that, one, I've experienced, and two, the things that I think we all should be aware of and what separates ego from reality. And as men, you know, we have an ego and there's a certain amount of ego that is, that is certainly healthy. But the important thing is, is that we, that we know how to balance it and we know which one is speaking to us uh, at, at any given point in time because, you know, it can sneak up on you. It sneaks up on me all the time. I believe that there are times where I have, you know, been narcissistic or there are traits that I have exposed or traits that I have lived out that were really narcissistic or really ego driven. And part of that is driven by society and the things that, you know, we're influenced by in, in news and media. But if you look back in history, a lot of the most destructive and a lot of the most messy and catastrophic events have really been correlated in some way, shape, or form to an ego-based decision. Whether that was because a leader of a country had too much pride, whether they didn't want to be wrong, they didn't want to appear to you know, be weak. For whatever reason, there have been a lot of catastrophic events in, his in history that have happened because of ego. And think about your own life. So maybe there was a breakup that you had, maybe there was a, a mistake that you made, maybe you felt foolish in front of a large group of people, and what was speaking to you then about not being wrong or to make the other person feel like they were in pain more than you were, or to just be too prideful and too strong, as it were, that you didn't display any kind of, you know, thought or reaction to it. Well, the reality is, is that that was your ego speaking to you because it did hurt. And the, the facade that you're putting in front, the facade that you're putting out there is the ego. The best way that I can describe ego is the fantasy or what you wish an outcome or what you wish you were. And a prime example of this is the movie Fight Club. So if you've ever seen it, it's it's one of my favorite movies personally, but uh, it's really popular. It was 1998, Edward Norton, Brad Pitt. Really very, very poignant in terms of its uh, satire and a lot of 
you know, deeply rooted messages that are strung throughout the entire movie. Every time that I watch it, I learn something new. But back to my point, it, it's really the biggest personification of what ego is. So if you think about what Edward Norton's character is, he's a guy that works nine to five in an office cubicle, and in his mind, what he thinks that he should be or what he desires to be and what he wishes to be is everything that he buys for his apartment, everything that he wears, everything that he drives, everything that where, where he lives. And where you see that is in the character of Brad Pitt. So Brad Pitt is kind of like this this end all be all like every guy wants to be like that. Well, the reality is, is that is the director's way of displaying Edward Norton's ego. So, you know, if you think about some of the things that, that Brad Pitt did, yes, you know, he did in that movie. If you think about some of the things that he did, he did teach really good life lessons and that's not the direction I'm going here, but he was also very destructive and it was also about, you know, the way that he came across in terms of his confidence, in terms of how he looked, in terms of, you know, his way with women, in terms of just how, you know, he, he operated in life. You know, at the very beginning when you meet him, he doesn't treat Edward Norton very nicely. He treats him like shit, actually. And he steals that guy's red car at the beginning. When Edward Norton calls him for a, you know, a, a place to live, he's kind of like, indifferent to Edward Norton. Like he doesn't really have a soul. So ego is really the, the desire or the, the magnification of what you wish that you were. So if you're starting a business, if you know, you have this idea in mind where it's going to make you a ton of money and you're going to live in this really big house and you're going to drive in this really big or this really nice car and you're going to live in the, you know, Bel Air or wherever it is, that's your ego. And the thing is, is, you know, ego can be tied into the other two things that we're going to talk about in the next few videos, which is mission and mission or purpose and confidence, right? So you're going to see as we move through these, how they're all uh, correlated, but ego is the false personification of, of your competence, right? So it's when the level at which you know how to do something has exceeded confidence. You know, confidence, the very definition of confidence is being able to just do something and do it very well. And let me give you an example. So let's say that some quarterback just shows up at either a combine or shows up at a practice or a game or in the locker room, wherever. He shows up and he encounters Tom Brady. Well, in those two scenarios, if the guy that's just showed up is going to try and go over and, and try and talk to Tom Brady about how to be, you know, the, the best quarterback or a winning quarterback or one that wins the Super Bowls, a top leader, the reaction that Tom Brady is going to have to that is that I don't need this guy to tell me that. I already know that. I have done it. I know what being a quarterback is at its core. There's nothing that this guy's going to be able to tell me to do that I don't know it. So he is a confident quarterback. Now, if Tom Brady is to then take that confidence and think that it can be translated to his ability to know how to trade stocks on Wall Street or how to invest in, you know, portfolios or, you know, how to build a business, how to build software, if he takes that confidence over into other areas of his life, that's not Tom Brady, that's Tom Brady's ego. And I'm just using his, him as an example, but it's, it's important because it's all the things that you wish that you were, all the things that you desire, all the things that you wish were different about your life that are actually not either happening or that you're not really moving towards or, or not at your core. So, you know, when we get into mission, you're going to understand a little bit more about when you're either building a business, trying to find success or going about your purpose or your mission. There are going to be many times if you, when you are faced with either the real scenario or is this your ego talking to you? And it happens all the time. 
if you're you know if you're trying to go after something if you're trying to attain success you know there's going to be an element of ego that speaks to you at every point in the time at every point uh, in that process the same thing is is when you actually do attain that so let's say that you wanted to build a an app and it was something around a uh, you know banking okay so in the time that you were building that app you had an ego sense of, that was telling you that this is going to be the life-changing app. You're going to live in Bel Air, live in this mansion. So your ego is speaking to you then. And let's say that you've attained success and you've done that. Okay. Well, that's that's awesome. But if you're if you're in that space and you think that because you've you've done that one single thing, which is awesome, you think you've done that one single thing that you're kind of your shit don't stink and that you know just because you built this bank app you could also do it in the fitness space you could also do it in the insurance space it doesn't mean that that is then when ego takes over so the the last part is you know ego can speak to you when you've also failed so i mentioned that at the top of the video if you've had a bad breakout, if you or a, a bad breakup, if you've you know made a big mistake, if you've had a public failure, what is trying to run and hide and what is trying to avoid facing the reality is really your ego, because without dealing with that and without coming to terms with the mistake that you've made and appearing that it doesn't affect you or appearing that it wasn't your fault, appearing flawless, that is all facade. And if you look up the very definition of what be being narcissistic is, you know, first there's a picture of, you know, somebody looking at a mirror and the image being different than, than it is. Well, if you're putting a facade up, that means that you're giving the impression, you're giving the image that it doesn't affect you. You're free of any kind of wrongdoing and that is not you that is your ego so it doesn't matter if you're working towards success are successful or you've had failure ego is always there along the way and how it ties into mission and how it ties into confidence are all things that are very interconnected and we will get to them as as we you know go through each video but definitely pay attention and know when your ego is speaking to you there's a very good book from Ryan Holiday, actually. And he talks about a lot of those historical stories. I will link to his book in the comments below. But he talks a lot about those historical stories. And if you're trying to figure out how to really get a good understanding of what ego is, I would highly recommend that book. It's really gonna shine a light on a lot of the things that one, you've already experienced, and two, you know, how those things are really speaking to you on a daily basis. So, Share your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you've not yet done so, please do share the channel with anybody that you think would be good contributors here at the main core. And I look forward to seeing you on the next topic, which is going to be mission. But uh, thank you again for another video participation here at the main core. Cheers.